just those two days or so are not enough. Um, you're going to need to take another few days to figure out how to do the spell. Because if you write a spell in an hour and then go cast it, that's probably not what I'm talking about, about writing your own spells. Because yes, you wrote it and you put your energy into it in that hour, but that's not a lot of energy, to be honest. I mean, it's great that you're writing your own spells, but you really do need to put some forth more effort. It is a lot of work to write your spells, it's a lot of write to work to write your rituals, and it's going to take a lot of time. So you need to make sure that you have the time to put forth that effort. If you don't, don't do the spell. It's as simple as that. If you kind of half-heartedly do the spell, it's... there's no point. I mean, really. The first thing that you're going to need to think about during that those few days when you're thinking about how you're going to cast the spell is when you're going to cast it. Um, this isn't may not be where you start, it doesn't have to be, but it's one of the things you need to think about. You need to think about when you can realistically cast it, because you're obviously, even if the best time of day with astrological correspondences and all that, to cast your spell is at noon. If you're at work, probably not the best time for you. And you're going to have to work around that. Find the second best time with astrological correspondences. Maybe it'll be 7 o'clock when you're at home, which is great. But say your roommate's home. You can't do a spell when your roommate's home for some reason. Look at the third best time for astrological correspondences. It might be 10 o'clock when your roommate has a date. So then you can do your spell. You're going to have to come up with some options uh, to realistically be able to figure out when you can do your spell. Even if the astrological correspondences work out, you should probably have a backup plan in case something goes wrong. There's traffic on your way home or something. So you really kind of need to come up with some options. Plus, even if those astrological correspondences work out, there might be other correspondences that tell you a different time. So make sure that you write down different times for each astrological body that you're doing research on. A note on astrological bodies, too. If you're doing research on them and they don't all seem to match very well, you don't have to pay attention to absolutely every astrological body. Most people will choose... We'll do some research. They'll do some research on maybe all the planets in our solar system and all that, but if that doesn't really match up or it doesn't really tell them what they want, which sounds bad, but it's kind of true, they'll just go with what the moon and the sun are doing. A good example of that is if you wanted to do a prosperity spell and the moon is waning, but it's, I don't know, Astara, that would be fine because the sun would be waxing. So if you're doing it during the day, then that would work out really well. So that sounds confusing, and it kind of is, and I'll probably go into more detail with it with my ritual video, but that's kind of the basics of what you need to know. The next thing you need to figure out about your spell is what kind of spell you're going to do. How are you going to do it? Are you going to do candle magic? Are you going to do cord magic? Are you going to do poppet magic? Are you going to do talisman magic? What are you going to do? How is your spell going to be manifested? If you do candle magic, then you'll have to figure out your correspondences. If you do talisman magic, you might have to make your talisman, figure out your correspondences for your stones and your other materials that are going into your talisman or whatever. So that's some more other research that you're going to have to do there too. The way you figure out what kind of magic you're going to do is kind of complicated. It goes with first with what your area of expertise is. If you study most about candle magic and you're most comfortable doing candle magic, then you might want to do candle magic. But I was talking to this girl online who was trying to quit smoking and she was going to do candle magic. And I recommended that she do talisman magic because to me, if you're doing talisman magic, say, say I was doing a spell to quit smoking, I wear this necklace pretty much every day. If I cast the magic on this necklace, I would have a physical reminder with me every day that I needed to not smoke. And when temptation arose, I could feel the magic in this talisman. So that's kind of the way I see it. If you need a constant reminder, do probably do talisman magic. If it's more of a love spell and you're sending your energy out to find the perfect mate, you could probably do candle magic or poppet magic. It just depends on what you're trying to do and how you feel it needs to be manifested on the physical plane. 